Just ahead on 6 News this morning, as police search for the killer who took a teenager's life, the victim's friends and families say the violence must stop. Meanwhile, the hunt is on for another shooting suspect who sent one person to the hospital overnight. And then one of Governor Rick Snyder's top aides is in hot water today and now owes the state thousands of dollars. Now, from your local news leader, this is 6 News. Good morning, everybody. Thanks so much for starting your day here with 6 News this morning. I'm Siobhan Klepper, Jim Geyer joining me today. Mm -hmm. Emily Walls has the day off, so does Evan. And boy, oh boy, we are starting the day warm. Yes. If not, I mean hot for this time. We're upper 60s or low 70s yeah. now. Yeah. Yeah. And there were days when we couldn't get that for a high temperature. I know. Mild and muggy to start the day. A little bit murky out there, too. There are some areas of fog as well. Taking a live look from our Capitol cam, you can see the, the cloud deck in the distance. It's it's pretty low deck of clouds, too, as we've seen some of the areas of fog form. Check out some of these visibilities down to uh, nearly a quarter of a mile around Jackson and Coldwater in Kalamazoo in the Lansing area. It's about a mile and a half visibility and uh, those temperatures again very mild so far. Otherwise we are dry. Some of the isolated showers that were out there a few hours ago have gone by the wayside, although we may see some of those redevelop as we go through the day. 71 in Lansing, 68 in Jackson, 69 for Mason and Hillsdale. And again, as we go through the day, morning fog, mostly cloudy. There will be a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms today. Temperatures top out in the low 80s. The Lansing mother of a murdered teen is asking for your help this morning, not only to track down her son's killer, but also to come together and find a way to stop the violence. 17 year old Richard Pruitt was taken off life support Thursday after being shot in the head inside a South Lansing home. This was Saturday morning. Community leaders say there's no easy answer for peace, but say everyone must work together. Officials are calling on parents, pastors, teachers and mentors to talk and have conversations to find ways to prevent violence so we can all live in a safer community. The gun violence, the shootings in the city are not going to be tolerated and we as a community are going to step up and do everything we can to keep this community safe. Officials say they are still looking for Pruitt's killer and want anyone with information to come forward. They also want to remind you that your tips can be anonymous. And new this morning, Lansing's most recent shooting that has Lansing police officers patrolling the streets right now for the person who they say shot a man late last night. It happened shortly before 11 p.m. on the 2500 block of Rio Road, which is on the city's south side. When officers arrived on scene, they found a man with a gunshot wound outside of a home. He was taken to the hospital and is expected to survive. Um, we had one of our fellow officers locate the possible suspect match in the description, which fled for the scene. We did set up a perimeter and had a canine team come in, and that proved to be negative. We didn't find the suspect. He may have gotten a vehicle or, or a house or jumped the perimeter. Officers are still searching for a motive and say this is the ninth shooting in Lansing in just one week. And all of this gun violence is the topic of our 6 This Morning Daily Poll. We want to know how you feel. Do you feel as though there's been a rise in violence across mid-Michigan? We'll feature updated results throughout the show as well as a few of your Facebook comments. And to vote, it's very simple. Just visit our website, WLNS.com on the 6 This Morning tab right there at the top of the page. And the LPD is also investigating a hit and run accident that's left a man behind bars. Take a look. It happened around 1230 this morning just north of East Grand River and Larch Street. Police say the driver of the flipped car hit a vehicle on the road and tried to drive off before hitting a curb, causing that person to land and the vehicle to land on its top. Now, according to officials, no one involved in the crash needed to be taken to the hospital. In this update to a four vehicle crash in Ohio earlier this week, the driver of a tractor trailer accused of causing the crash that killed a couple from Howell pleaded not guilty to charges, including vehicular homicide. You are taking a look right now at aerial footage from the crash Wednesday morning on US 23 in Delaware County. 58 year old Randall Lee faces two charges after authorities say he rammed into the back of the SUV, setting off an accident that killed Curtis and Patricia Dixon of Howell. The cause of the crash is still being investigated, but officials say alcohol was not involved. 
In Jackson, a fight over custody ended with a woman in handcuffs after police say she stabbed a man. Officials were called to the 100 block of McEwen Street in Summit Township just after 2 p.m. Thursday. That's where they found the 20 year old victim. Officials say he and the 20 year old suspect had been arguing when things escalated. He is expected to survive. The woman could be formally charged in court today. Meantime, lawmakers in Lansing continue talks over ban banning e-cigarettes to minors, but not everyone is happy with where the bill stands. The latest modifications to the bill will likely include a tax hike, but not necessarily at the same level of regular tobacco. Senator Rick Jones began pushing for a ban on e-cigs to youths back in November of last year, but since then he's become unhappy with some of the changes. Six News political correspondent Tim Skubik is working this story today and he'll have much more from Jones tonight on Six News at 5 and 6. Meantime, a top aide to Governor Rick Snyder may have to pay the state more than $12,000 in order to settle a tax issue. He's accused of wrongfully claiming exemptions on two homes in two states. Richard Bart is governor's, the governor's transformation manager. Now, he bought a home in Bath Township back in 2011. That was exempt of property taxes. But meanwhile, Baird still owes another home in the Chicago area. He owns a home, I should say, that has a similar exemption. The family should have only been allowed one exemption, and Baird says he plans to pay back the property taxes immediately on his Bath Township home in order to put the issue to rest. Now, weather on the sixes, brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. Skies are cloudy across mid Michigan this morning. We have some areas of fog as well. Taking a live look from our capital cam, the sky you can see uh, there's a lot of moisture just hanging in the atmosphere. Visibility not too bad in the city. Gets out uh, some of the outlying areas. The visibility starts to go down a little bit. In fact, visibility is in our far southern sections down to about a quarter of a mile or so around uh, Coldwater, also in Hillsdale. And, uh, Charlotte now down to uh, nearly a quarter of a mile. Same thing in Mason. So there are some areas of dense fog out there to start the day. Otherwise, it's just a blanket of low clouds across mid Michigan. Not too much activity as far as rainfall, at least not yet. We do have a chance of seeing some rain again today. It's 67 in Jackson, 71 in Adrian Lansing, also 71 mid 60s as you go further to the north. As we go through the day, we'll just see these temperatures slowly climb. A little bit cooler to the north. You can see some upper 50s Alpena northward on up towards Sault Ste. Marie. Uh, they also have lots of clouds and a couple of isolated showers. The last of the showers across our part of the state have moved eastward. We'll probably see a few isolated showers and thunderstorms develop as we go through the day. Precision cast takes us to the noon hour. Still lots of clouds around couple of isolated showers or thunderstorms possible. Many of you will not see this activity. There will be a few just roaming around as we go through the day. Things do settle down a bit overnight, but once again, we could have some areas of fog form through the early morning hours of tomorrow. So for today, here's your day in detail. We'll have lots of clouds, some fog this morning. We'll break into a little bit of sunshine, but again, there will be a couple of isolated showers and thunderstorms popping up as temperatures just sneak into the low 80s this afternoon. Warmer weather slowly heading our way. We'll actually go a little bit above normal Ooh. as we go into the upcoming weekend. And uh, by the time we head into Monday, it'll be more than just a little bit above normal. <gasps> Will we reach 90 this summer? That's the big question. Okay. If we have a shot at it, Monday. Okay. Stay tuned for some heat. Yes, all right. Thanks, Jim. Coming up on 6 News this morning as protests continue in Ferguson, Missouri, demonstrators all over the country held a national day of rage, including right here in Lansing. We'll have the latest from Missouri right after the break. Our time now, 439, looking live in Jackson. Thanks for watching 6 News this morning. Welcome back. Missouri's governor has ordered the National Guard to leave Ferguson, Missouri. This after two weeks of protesting over the fatal shooting of Michael Brown. As Omar Villafranca reports, crowds in the city and beyond are keeping up their call for justice in wake of the 18-year-old's death. Members of the Missouri National Guard are starting to leave Ferguson as things get back to normal. Missouri State Highway Patrol Captain Ron Johnson visited a community center hours ago and got a special gift from kids who have begun to play again. The kids that were there today gave me this sock puppet before I left. This is what defines 
a community. This is truly the community of Ferguson. The number of demonstrators continued to grow even smaller after nightfall, but their message of justice for Michael Brown is still loud and clear. It's a message shared by Michael Brown Sr. My son had his hands up. That lets the world know that he's been taught to understand and, and do the proper things that he are told by a police officer who he's supposed to trust. Since demonstrations began here August 9th, authorities have arrested more than 200 people. Many of them would like to see Officer Darren Wilson prosecuted for shooting and killing the unarmed 18-year-old. On Thursday, protesters in more than a dozen cities showed their anger in a day of rage, some of them at the White House. In Clayton, Missouri, others delivered petitions demanding the removal of Robert McCullough, the prosecutor overseeing the state's investigation because of his close ties to law enforcement. Physical evidence, including shell casings and clothing, were flown to the FBI lab in Quantico, Virginia Thursday as part of the federal probe into Brown's death. Omar Villafranca, CBS News, Ferguson, Missouri. At this point, Missouri's Governor Jay Nixon says he has no plans to remove the prosecutor from the case. In the meantime, back here in Lansing. Hands up, don't shoot! Hands up, don't shoot! That was the rally cry outside of the state capitol Thursday evening where dozens of protesters came down to join similar events happening all over the country, including in cities like Detroit and Ann Arbor. The protesters called for more to be done in the fatal shooting of Brown. Meantime, Brown's family members are preparing for his funeral, which is set for Monday. All right, stay with us. Jim's in next with more on your forecast today. And then coming up in morning sports, we'll introduce you to the newest captains of the 2014 MSU football team. Plus, ahead in your health cast, before you get ready to send your kids back to school, one Michigan group is stressing the importance of dental health. We'll tell you why. Your time now is 444. Give me a live look at Capitol Building in Lansing. We'll be right back. Happy Friday, everybody. Now, weather on the sixes. Brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. Our time now, 446, cloudy skies, some areas of fog too across mid-Michigan. A live look from our uh, Capitol Cam. We're looking southward. That's Grand Avenue, and yeah, the further away you get from the camera, you can see the visibility starts to go down a little bit. Areas of dense fog in parts of mid-Michigan. Not everyone seeing the dense fog, but certainly noticeable. All that moisture is kind of hanging in the air right now. It's very humid out there. 71 in Lansing at 67 degrees in Jackson. 69 right now in cold water. Same thing over toward Kalamazoo. Uh, Grand Rapids right at 70 degrees, slightly cooler to the north. You can see it's mid 60s from Alma northward. But uh, again, most of mid Michigan in the upper 60s or low 70s at this time. And again, there are some reduced visibilities out there down to about a quarter of a mile around uh, the uh, cold water area. Same thing toward Kalamazoo Jackson, about a half mile visibility. So you're going to run in and uh, out of some of these patches of dense fog if you have a trip of any duration or length. You can see all the active weather lining up to our south. There's a front just kind of stalled out here. So all the showers and thunderstorms that you're seeing right now, well, these are just going to continue to make their way pretty much over the same areas. They got some flash flooding problems across parts of Illinois and Indiana right now. For us, if we see any activity, it's going to be those isolated uh, pop up showers and thunderstorms uh, above this low uh, veil of clouds. We actually don't have a second and third layer. So if we uh, get rid of some of this moisture, we'll probably sneak a, a few peaks of sunshine into mid Michigan. But precision cast shows as we head into the afternoon, if we get any sun, that's going to set off the chance, a chance for an isolated shower or thunderstorm as we head through the day. And then as we go through the night into tomorrow morning, some areas of fog again possible, uh, but the trade off is I think we stay dry for the day tomorrow as again all the activity slides by to our south. In fact, I'm thinking it's even further south than what precision cast is showing. So Saturday's looking OK as we go into the day on Sunday. The dry weather holds after starting the day with some patches of fog. Uh, we should uh, be under partly cloudy skies right through the day on Sunday. So uh, things are looking pretty good as we go into the weekend and we slowly warm up as well. Starting off mild and muggy this morning. No breeze, some fog will be in the upper 60s or low 70s. Heading well into the 70s by the noon hour into the afternoon. There will be a slight chance 
of a shower or a thunderstorm. Again, many areas will not see that, but temperatures climb a little bit above normal. Normal highs 80, look for a high around 82 degrees, a very light east to southeast breeze right through the day. Again, we're calm right now. As we head into tonight, some fog possible, 67 for your Saturday. Look for partly sunny skies, only a slight, very slight chance of a shower or thunderstorm. Uh, Sunday, I think we're dry from beginning to end with mid 80s. Our chance of seeing a 90 degree reading looks like it comes on Monday. Many areas upper 80s to near 90. And then we bring in another chance for showers and thunderstorms late Tuesday and into Wednesday. All right, Jim, thank you very much. Well, with the start of the season just a week away, the Spartan football team has elected new leadership and a high school basketball star decides which school he plans to play for. Fred Human slams home the highlights, details and more. Hey, good sports Friday to you. Michigan State's football team opens the season a week from tonight and they broke training camp yesterday. Players off for the weekend. The team elected captains and they were introduced yesterday. Mark Danchoni really has a 12 player leadership council and of those 12, the players elected were Curtis Drummond, Shalik Calhoun and Travis Jackson to be the new captains. I thought a couple other guys was going to be ahead of me and uh, take the leadership position, but that wasn't going to stop me from, you know, being vocal and trying to, you know, keep this team on a, a positive note. There's so many great leaders on this team, uh, you know, Connor Cook, Jack Allen, and Connor Cruz on the offense, and Tony Lippett, Jeremy Langford, and so it's like, it's a huge group of leaders. It's not like I'm leading by myself out there. It caught me off guard just because of the depth that we have in leadership. And uh, we, we have guys, uh, not only seniors, but juniors who can lead. And we're going to need everybody to, to step up and lead each week and, and continue to motivate and push guys. We've got 12 guys that sort of lead. Um, but, um, you know, when they had to pick the three out of the 12, you know, these are the three they picked. I think any of those guys would have been good. But the key to this is all, it's always going to be when we hit adversity, how do we lead? We have a six sports preseason football special on the way for you. Editing like crazy at this hour. For next Wednesday's 7 o'clock live college football special countdown to kickoff. Make sure you mark it on your sports calendar as it's a must-see event. Countdown to kickoff for the high school football season 2. Uh, next Thursday night, the openers and our first fifth quarter show of the season Thursday. Uh, yesterday was scrimmage day for many area teams. Lansing Sexton hosting a four-teamer. These kids are going to have to wait a few years to get on the fifth quarter. Sexton against Battle Creek Central. Running game was on. Cornelius Brown Jr. weaves his way in for a 40-yard touchdown that got the Big Reds fired up. Then one of Sexton's top players on defense is Avante Bell and offense, really. But here on D, he sacks Lakewood's quarterback. Dan Bogan pleased with what he saw. The Big Reds open one week from tonight, actually. We complete our 10 days in 20 teams journey. Tonight at 6 and 11, our final two stops take us to Perry and Jackson Lumen Christie. That's tonight at 6 and 11. Six Sports has learned that former Lansing Sexton basketball star Trevor Manuel has made his widely anticipated decision on which school to he'll attend this season. Lansing Everett, the winner. Manuel transferred to Oak Hill Commodity Academy Prep School after his sophomore year at Sexton, got homesick, moved back to the area this summer, decided to play for Desmond Ferguson next year at Lansing Everett. There's a morning look at sports. We'll see you tonight at 6 and 11. Have a great Friday. All right, Fred, thanks. And we'll see Jim back in just a bit with more on your weekend forecast. And then coming up in your health cast, what happens when habitual, habitual smokers are given cigarettes with less nicotine? The results may surprise you. Stick around. That and more in your health cast. Now, the latest health news and information. This is the 6 News Health Cast. Welcome back. As another school year gets set to begin, Blue Cross Blue Shield wants to remind families that kids and kids, I should say, that in addition to getting all of your school supplies and vaccinations, you should also be making a trip to the dentist, part of your back to school routine. And that's why today has been named National Tooth Fairy Day. Blue Cross Blue Shield of Michigan is encouraging families to use today as an opportunity to educate their children on oral health. BCBS Dental Director Gary Vance says some important things to remember are that teeth need to be brushed at least twice a day and you should replace your toothbrush every three to four months. And researchers studied a group of smokers to see how they would react to cigarettes with reduced nicotine. The Canadian study found participants did not smoke more cigarettes to compensate for the lower nicotine and they did not puff with more intensity which would have exposed them to more toxic chemicals in the smoke. 
Researchers say that results will be important in how the debate over how to regulate nicotine. Now, weather on the sixes, brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. Skies are cloudy across mid-Michigan. Not only we have clouds, but also some areas of fog. A live look now from our Capitol Cam. We're looking along Michigan Avenue. You can see the visibility reduces as you look further into the distance because uh, there are patches of fog out there. Some of the uh, low-lying outlying areas away from the city have more of a fog problem than right in the city. And everyone very mild. It's upper 60s or low 70s to start your day. 71 degrees. The uh, current temperature in Lansing hardly a breeze out there right now and uh, humidity is between 90 and 100 percent across mid Michigan. Thus the fog this morning 67 right now in Jackson. Uh, humidity here is about 93 percent. No breeze to get things moving around either. So uh, that's uh, why we have those patches of dense fogs. Many places are seeing some brief reduced visibility down to about a quarter of a mile or so. But at least we're missing out on the rain. Uh, heavy rains have been going on through parts of Illinois, Indiana and to Ohio. A lot of uh, flash flood warnings still in effect here because the rain keeps moving over the same areas over and over again. As we go through this day, well, we'll continue with uh, the areas of fog this morning, breaking into a little bit of sunshine today and temperatures just sneak into the low 80s this afternoon. But Good Friday morning, everybody. Thanks so much for starting your day with Six News this morning. I'm Siobhan Klepper. Jim Geyer joining me this morning as Emily and Evan both have the day off today. A couple of things you're going to notice this morning. Number one, the temperature. Yeah. Wow. Mm -hmm. And number two, you might not be able to notice as much because of visibility concerns. Visibilities have uh, dropped a little bit. In parts of mid-Michigan, we're seeing some of the visibilities down to a quarter of a mile. And you can see from our Capitol Cam, we're looking to the east along Michigan Avenue. And you can see there's a little bit of a moisture hanging in the air. It's a little bit murky out there. It is very humid, too. Uh, humidity is uh, between 90 and 100 percent across mid-Michigan, but no rain. All that moisture, however, hanging in the air. Visibility down to about a quarter mile around Jackson. One mile visibility in the Lansing area, especially outlying areas. Half mile visibility in cold water. And uh, for today, dry weather right now. The rain is to our south. As we head through the day, we'll increase a chance of seeing a shower or thunderstorm. Mild and muggy, 71 in Lansing, 67 in Jackson. As we go through the day, well, the fog will slowly dissipate this morning. Mostly cloudy and isolated shower thunderstorm possible and a high of 82 degrees. All right, Jim, thank you very much. We're going to start this half an hour by looking at the ongoing situation in the Middle East, where we're learning more today about the death of American journalist James Foley. He was executed earlier this week by ISIS militants. Well, now U.S. officials say his captors demanded more than $132 million in ransom before killing him. U.S. soldiers did attempt to rescue Foley and another American, Stephen Sotloff, but were unsuccessful. And ISIS is now threatening to kill Sotloff as well. According to President Obama, the U.S. will protect American personnel and facilities and says new airstrikes hit ISIS targets in northern Iraq Thursday. Now, 6 News reached out to Senator Debbie Stabenow, who had this to say about the violence in the Middle East. We need to come together as a Congress. This is not a time for politics. This is a time for people coming together and supporting our president, supporting our country, supporting those who have already laid their lives on the line for us and those who are really trying to make a difference and trying to save lives right now. And be sure to stay with 6 News both on air and online as we continue to keep you informed on the crisis overseas. Well, back here in mid-Michigan, there's a warning this morning for those shopping for vitamins. That's after chocolate chips, cat food, and the wrong prescription drugs were found inside some pill bottles at several Meyer stores in Kalamazoo County. Store officials noticed the problem Wednesday and called police. Now, according to Portage Public Safety officials, four bottles of Mega Red Ultra Strength Omega-3 Krill Oil were tampered with. The bottles had been resealed and then put back on the store shelves. Police thankfully have identified a suspect thanks to surveillance video, but so far no arrests have been made. Meantime, a Starbucks store in Florida has hundreds of people talking this morning, and it all started with a generous act from a customer in the drive through On Wednesday, the woman offered to pay the bill of a person in the car behind her. Not really unusual. However, that sparked a chain reaction that lasted for days. 
By the end of the day, more than 350 people had paid it forward and another 200 people followed suit on Thursday. Starbucks says the longest pay it forward chain was actually at a Connecticut store where charity made its way through 1000 cars. Another topic making headlines recently, the issue of gay marriage in Michigan. And if you're in support, you may want to hop in your car and head downtown Lansing this weekend because there is a Michigan Pride rally planned for the Capitol. You can show your support for the lesbian, gay, bisexual and transgender community. Everything kicks off at 1 p.m. Saturday with a march to the Capitol steps. And then after that, there will be a group commitment ceremony as well as numerous speakers, including Democratic candidate for governor Mark Schauer. The event is free and open to everyone. And if you're interested in gardening tonight in East Lansing, you can learn from from some of the best at the Broad Art Museum. Michigan State University experts, they're hosting an interactive exhibit called The Art of Gardening. You'll have your chance to make your own arrangement that you can take home as well and learn about how to incorporate new design elements into your garden. Tickets include food, drinks, and gardening materials, and the event starts at 6 p.m. And also kicking off tonight in Mason, the Sun-Dried Music Festival. There will be plenty of live music, of course, food and drinks. The festival will continue at noon on Saturday as well with performers on three stages, and there will also be vendors and a kids' entertainment area. Now, weather on the sixes, brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. We have cloudy skies across mid Michigan to start the day. Also, some areas of fog. We're taking a live look from our tower cam right outside our studios. Now, this camera is a few hundred feet off the ground, and uh, as a result, uh, that's why we're seeing things a little more murky than what you're probably seeing uh, at ground level. But nonetheless, there are some areas of dense fog out there this morning. In fact, some of the visibility is down to about a half mile Hillsdale and Coldwater quarter to a half mile around Charlotte, also in Mason in the city of Lansing, two mile visibility or more. Uh, Jackson about one mile visibility out at Reynolds Field out at the airport there and temperature wise it's 60s and 70s to start the day mild and uh, muggy 71 in Lansing 67 for Jackson 69 degrees in Howell uh, mid 60s as you head further to the north and uh, as we go through this day those temperatures will just slowly climb across the the mid Michigan area now for today we're starting with the clouds and the fog, but we're starting out dry. The rain is to our south, but as we head through the day, we could see a couple of isolated showers or thunderstorms pop up across mid Michigan as we go through the day. Precision cast shows that for the afternoon hours. Notice more areas not seeing rain than are seeing rain and things do settle down as we head through the night. Although again, tomorrow morning we could have some areas of dense fog again. And we may repeat that again on Sunday morning too. the atmosphere. Uh, a lot of moisture just uh, hanging in the air right now. Um, had to use a lot of hairspray this morning. <laughs> and, we go, and as we go through the day, we uh, climb out of the upper 60s into the low 80s. Partly sunny at times, but again, an isolated shower or thunderstorm possible. Many of you will not see that, however. So overall, just a good looking Friday for yeah, most. Yeah, the activity as far as showers and thunderstorms settling down as the temperatures slowly climb. I like that. And you know, I don't really, I don't have air conditioning, but even I'm in support <laughs> of some warmth because we just haven't seen a lot of it this summer. No, I haven't hit 90 yet in Lansing. Hopefully Monday. That would like be the day. Teased. That okay. would be the day. Okay, all right, thanks Jim. Still ahead on 6 News this morning, actress Elizabeth Moss. Moss talks about her new film where she plays a married woman whose relationship takes a turn for the worse. We'll preview that movie and more coming up in entertainment. Our time now is 5.07. Thanks for watching 6 News this morning. Now, the latest business and financial news. This is 6 News Money Watch. Welcome back. Your time is 510. New reports show flipping houses may not be the money making endeavor it used to be. And while women continue to make positive strides in the workforce, harassment is also an ongoing problem. Jerika Duncan has those details and more in this morning's Money Watch report. Sears Holdings Corporation, which operates Sears and Kmart, says revenue declined 10% in the second quarter. The retail company says it plans to do more cost cutting. That includes closing more stores beyond the 130 it had announced earlier this year. On Wall Street Thursday, stocks gained ground. The Dow rose more than 60 points. The Nasdaq added more than five. 
Fewer people are flipping homes across the country. Realty Track says that in the second quarter, the number of people buying and selling homes within the same year decreased from the first quarter. Homes that have been flipped now account for less than 5% of all sales. That's down from 6% a year ago. And women are making strides in construction trades, but when it comes to harassment and discrimination, there's work to be done. The Institute for Women's Policy Research says nearly a third of women reported high levels of harassment. One in 10 made a formal charge to the Equal Employment Opportunity Commission because of discrimination. Over 200 women took the survey. That's your Money Watch report. For the latest business news, go to cbsmoneywatch.com. In New York, I'm Jerika Duncan. And for the latest in weather, keep it here. Jim's in next with a look at your Friday forecast. Thanks for starting your morning with us. We'll be right back. Now, weather on the sixes. Brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. We are coming up on 516. We have cloudy skies across mid-Michigan. Some areas of fog, too. A live look from our Capitol Cam. We're looking southward along Grand Avenue right now. And uh, you can see it's kind of hazy, a little foggy out there this morning. Visibility not too bad in the city at this time and temperatures. Well, they're up there quite a bit. We're in the 60s and 70s across mid Michigan. 68 degrees in Jackson while it's 71 in Lansing. Coldwater, you're right at 70 degrees. Same thing in Kalamazoo this morning. Also in Grand Rapids, 70 degrees. You head up the road toward uh, Alma. It's in the mid 60s. Same thing in Mount Pleasant. Skies are cloudy just about uh, over the entire state at this time. There were a few rain showers early this morning moving through the northern parts of the state, and it's still raining to the south of Michigan. In between, oh, we just have the moisture in the form of some fog. You can see visibility now in uh, cold water about a half of a mile or so. And in and around the mid-Michigan area, we've seen some patches of fog reduce visibility to about a quarter of a mile. All the active weather as far as showers, thunderstorms, heavy downpours remain to our south. You can see this area of thunderstorms in Illinois and Indiana heading into Ohio just bypassing the mid-Michigan area. And notice these thunderstorms going over the same areas. They've got a lot of flooding problems here across parts of Illinois and especially Indiana right now. Uh, if you've got a trip down toward the Fort Wayne area, it's certainly going to run into some of these areas of uh, heavy rain, a lot of thunderstorm activity going on in Indiana. But notice, pretty much stops right at the border, and it's not heading our way. Anything we see today would be of the pop-up shower or thunderstorm variety. Precision cast shows that could happen as we go into the afternoon hours, and then things settle down again as we head through the night. But uh, just like this morning, we could start the day tomorrow morning with some areas of fog. Most of the day tomorrow, I think we're just partly cloudy. Yeah, there could be an isolated thunderstorm. Uh, most areas will not see any activity for your Saturday and into Sunday. I think the chances of any showers or thunderstorms actually go down. So we'll just have partly cloudy skies for Sunday and even into Monday. Things looking pretty good too, and those temperatures will slowly climb. We're already mild and muggy this morning. Some areas of fog temperatures will be upper 60s or low 70s this morning, and then we're in the mid to upper 70s by the noon hour. Not much of a breeze either. We're going to have an east to southeast breeze today as temperatures slowly climb into the low 80s on your six day outlook as we Head into the day tomorrow again after starting with some fog. We'll break into some sun. Temperature tops out around 84 degrees. We round out the weekend on Sunday with the partly cloudy skies after a little bit of morning fog. Sunday's high around 85 degrees. All right, Jim, thank you very much. We told you earlier this morning the 17 year old boy shot over the weekend inside a Lansing home has died. Police continue to search for the person who pulled the trigger. Near this crime, along with the city's most recent shooting late last night, makes nine shootings in just one week in Lansing. And this got us thinking. So for our six this morning daily poll, we're curious if you've noticed a rise in violence in mid Michigan. Do you feel like it's going up? Taking a look at the poll results so far. Wow, 98% of you say yes, you do. Only 2% say no. Here's what some of you are saying on our WLNS Facebook page. Tiffany Bryan wrote in part, it's not just happening here, it's happening everywhere. The economy is supposedly getting better, yet crimes are on the rise. Everything from purse snatching, meth addicts gone haywire, people all over have this cliche about snitches get stitches, so people don't come forward to help solve cases. However, 
Ronald Nickel Stempleton says the numbers statistically say crimes actually going down and he's urging people to look at the facts. Thank you for all of your comments so far. There is still time to join the discussion. Head over to WLNS.com. Click on the six this morning tab right there at the top of the page and we'll share updated results coming up at the end of the show today. But coming up right after the break on six this morning, Dakota Fanning shares her excitement about playing a real life character in the upcoming film, The Last of Robin Hood. We'll have a sneak peek of that movie and another one hitting theaters today. Coming up in entertainment, your time now 520, 71 degrees outside, a live look over Lansing. We'll be right back. Welcome back, it's 523 and here on 6 News this morning, we want to keep you up to date with all of the news happening around mid-Michigan. So here's a look at some of the stories our media partners are working on today. From WHMI, construction on the Livingston County Jail will begin soon now that officials officially broke ground on the expansion project. It happened just hours after final site plans were approved. It's a two phase $17 million renovation project that, among other things, will create new cells and more than 100 jail beds. In the Jackson Citizen Patriot, according to a new state report from the Bureau of Labor Market Information and Strategic Initiative, more than 1,000 new jobs were added last year in Jackson County. There were 66,200 employees in July of this year, up from 65,100 in July of 2013. Speaking of jobs in MLI of Lansing, a new Michigan State University study found an abusive supervisor who targets individual employees can actually negatively impact the entire team. The workplace study looked at teams in both China and here in the U.S. And the study also found the behavior encourages other employees to behave similarly towards each other. Of course, for more of your local news, you can always head to our website, which is WLNS.com. All right, in entertainment news now, what happens when Elizabeth Moss tries to get a troubled marriage back on track? Suzanne Marquez has a preview of that movie hitting theaters today and more in your eye on entertainment. Beyonce and Jay-Z are off the hook for their visit to Cuba. A government review says they did not violate U.S. sanctions when they visited the island last year, and there's no plan for a formal investigation. The couple had described their trip as a cultural visit. Elizabeth Moss stars in a new romance with a sci-fi twist. The One I Love is the story of a marriage that's hit the skids. The couple heads to a weekend retreat where strange things start to happen. But I have to say, it was kind of magical. Moss says she tried to bring a woman's perspective on what's really important in a romantic relationship. It's really about sense of humor. It's about being listened to. It's about communication and, and trust and um, being able to talk to somebody. The One I Love is in theaters tonight. Opening later this month is the little-known scandal from the final years of Errol Flynn. It's the way he wants it. But that doesn't mean that's what he's going to get. Mom, he's Errol Flynn. Kevin Klein plays the aging movie star in The Last of Robin Hood. Dakota Fanning is the young starlet who steals his heart. I was just really excited that um, that it was a true story and that it really happened. And 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 it's also it's also exciting to tell a story that not many people know about. Susan Sarandon plays Fanning's fame-obsessed mother, who encourages the affair to promote her daughter's career. That's your Eye on Entertainment. Suzanne Marquez, CBS News, Los Angeles. Now, weather on the sixes, brought to you by your local independent auto owners insurance agents. Our time now 526. We have cloudy skies across mid Michigan, some areas of fog as well. Taking a live look now from our capital cam downtown. Visibility not too bad in the city, but when you look behind the Capitol Dome there, you can see how humid it is. It's kind of hazy and uh, in some places uh, reduced visibility, meaning some dense fog as well. Humidity right now is about 93% across a good part of mid Michigan. No breeze, get things moving around. It's 71 to start your day in Lansing and Jackson. Your temperature is at 68. No breeze here as well and humidity as well here about 93%. We're at least missing out on some heavy downpours from about the Chicago area down toward Fort Wayne. They've been getting rain over and over again. Some serious flooding going on there. Well, we just have our moisture in the form of some fog and haze, and uh, that will slowly uh, dissipate as we go through the morning hours. A little bit of sun at times from midday into the afternoon. Can't rule out an isolated thunderstorm today as temperatures sneak into the low 80s. Overnight skies uh, will be mostly cloudy. Might have some areas of fog again as we drop to 67. Tomorrow, 
partly sunny skies, a high about 84 degrees, 85 on Sunday, and it looks like the hottest day coming up will be Monday as we approach 90 degrees.